Welcome everybody to Nerd Rotic Live. My name is Gary Beekler and I have another channel called Nerd Rotic, but occasionally I like to do stuff over here and all of it is live. This is essentially a video, It'll be about 15 to 20 minutes. We'll see how long it goes, but we are going to be talking about Doctor Who because a very interesting article came my way a couple of days ago. Thought about putting it on my main channel, but it's something I just wanted to do here. Wanted to throw some love to Nerd Rotic Live, and it's from Radio Times. And, you know, we fans don't always get what we want, and we shouldn't always get what we want. But what was proposed here by John Berriman would, would absolutely make money, guaranteed. It would bring Doctor Who back, but we all know why it won't happen. Now, let's go to Radio Times. We'll hit up this article here. And it was. John Berriman basically pitching a Torchwood movie. Now, the article originally said Doctor Who movie, and it would be a Doctor Who movie. It would star David Tennant as the Metacrisis Doctor, I would assume, and Billy Piper, and bring back John Berriman, you know, for Torchwood. And it was, you know, it would hopefully involve Russell T. Davies, although Russell T. Davies has publicly said he doesn't want to go back to that, but a film I think would be different. I think a film would work. I don't think they'd have a hard time getting money from this, from licensees, or you could even crowdfund this. I, you know, I don't know how the BBC feels about crowdfunding a practically a government organization, but this would be the easiest crowdfunded film of all time. If you could crowdfund a Veronica Mars movie, you could crowdfund a Doctor Who movie, and everybody would love this. But unfortunately, at the end of this, I'll give you the bad news on why this probably will never happen. But that sucks. That sucks because this would certainly help the dying franchise of Doctor Who. Uh, all right, so Russell T. Davies and John Behrman have discussed Torchwood movie starring David Tennant and Billy Piper. Uh, could could Captain Jack Hartness return for a trip in the TARDIS with some old Doctor Who favorites? I like I like how you guys spell stuff over there. Favorites, color and aluminium. Uh, you definitely say uh, aluminum a lot better. I have to admit that. This is by Thomas Ling of Radio Times, which is essentially a PR firm for Doctor Who. 10 years, it's been an entire decade since Captain Jack Harkness last enjoyed a Doctor Who outing with Rose Tyler and the 10th Doctor on screen. However, could the time-traveling trio played by John Barrowman, Billy Piper, and David Tennant hop into the TARDIS for a big screen adventure? God, yes, I would watch that. Take my money. That's what we're hoping for after Behrman recently revealed he had been spitballing some very interesting ideas with former Who showrunner Russell T. Davies. I can't remember what ceremony it was. He goes to so many ceremonies he can't remember. He told RadioTimes.com, but I was speaking to Davies. He'd picked up an award for a very English scandal, and we said, wouldn't it be great if we could do a Torchwood or Doctor Who movie with Captain Jack, David Tennant, and Billy Piper? Uh, yeah, that would be effing great. Behrman added, if I can boast, and you can, the three of us, what we call each other the golden age, he laughs, the three of us made such an impact that people still talk about us to this day, which is great. And I'm going to break in here and say that, you know, the Matt Smith era was fine. It was good. I liked it. Uh, Peter Capaldi, unfortunately, it wasn't his fault. He did. A, he was great as a doctor, but the material he was given was pretty bad. Clara was annoying. Um, <clears throat> the Jodie Whittaker era, you guys know how I feel about that. The reason Doctor Who is still popular is because of that golden age. And the classic era, of course, but there's a lot, I would say just as many, maybe more new Who fans than classic Who fans now, because it really did capture the youth of that era. A lot of kids, a lot of kids got into Doctor Who, and that's the biggest mistake they've made over the past few years is losing the young audience. And it was no more evident than at Comic-Con last year. I just, or this year, I just went to San Diego Comic-Con and I saw... One Jody cosplay, one, 
one single one. There might have been more, but I walked the floor two full days and I saw one. There was certainly a Jody presence there at the BBC booth where they were selling Jody pop vinyls, but it, it was really tchotchkes. It wasn't uh, major action figure lines like they've had in the past. Uh, that Doctor Who booth, you you couldn't get into it. You could walk right up in the line and buy stuff this year. It just didn't have the presence. The presence. There wasn't uh, TARDIS dresses anywhere. I mean, it used to dominate con between the years of 2011, 2013, Doctor Who owned con. Jody didn't even make an appearance this year. So if you did something like this, it would completely overshadow Doctor Who Series 12. That's why it won't happen. Unfortunately, it's uh, it's the probably the agenda behind this. And Chris Chibnall, who does run All Things Who, now I've done a video on the main channel channel about this because this was brought up about a year ago, and it got you know shot down immediately with Chibnall being in charge. So it depends really on the BBC and if Chibnall is going to be around much longer. We don't know. Although Berriman didn't go into details about the movie idea, a big screen outing would probably have to be set before the events of 2010's The End of Time and the Doctor Who episode, which saw David Tennant's Doctor regenerate into Matt Smith's. Not necessarily. If you use the Meta Crisis Doctor, that way he can age. That way you can bring in the real Rose. And to ensure such a project would feature most of the original Torchwood team, a movie would also have to be set before 2009's Children of Earth, R.I.P. Yanto. Well, you do travel in time, don't you? I mean, you travel in time. Is is Yanto's death a fixed moment in time? I'm not too sure about that. I'm not too sure. But I'm guessing, you know, they put the Metacrisis Doctor in there for a reason. Uh, I always thought that they would maybe use it to, to revisit the, the Tenet era. And that way he can age. And it's not that big of a deal. And then you don't have to use the de-aging technology, which is very expensive. And what would the film's plot be? Could the movie perhaps see Captain Jack and the Doctor face a threat spawned out of the Cardiff space-time rift? Or will the TARDIS team and Torchwood have to join forces to take on the Daleks once more? Well, that would be great. Or you can do both. Uh, but we should probably stop speculating here. Uh, there are quite a few roadblocks in the way of the new Doctor Who film uh, materializing. First off, Russell T. Davies, although he has uh, the old head of Who might have shown enthusiasm for the idea, it's unlikely the writer would want to seriously pursue it, recently telling Radio Times he'd never write a Who story again. It'll be like coming back to an old job I did 10 years ago, wouldn't it? Uh, wouldn't it do that? Well, this is a Torchwood story, technically. So, you know. Never say never. Never say never. Uh, then there's the question of who would finance such a film. Barrowman has been unable to find enough support among executives to produce another episode of Torchwood, let alone a big screen outing. Well, I just gave you a way to finance it. I have seen lesser things get crowdfunded. I have witnessed I had I have witnessed independent comic books getting crowdfunded to the tune of half a million dollars. So you extrapolate that out with a show as popular as Torchwood and Doctor Who, you would have a problem. You know, all you'd have to get some licensees on board. The thing, the roadblock is Chris Chibnall. The roadblock is Jodie Whittaker's Doctor. That's the roadblock. Uh, I'm a big advocate for Torchwood uh, revival, but uh, it's always seemed to hit a hit brick walls. He said, "I've been shut down many times in the past. There comes a point where one just sits back and waits to see what happens." We'll have to wait and see. Well, I think, you know, uh, but despite being unsuccessful in his attempts to revive Captain Jack on screen, Barrowman is still adamant that the character will always be and will always have an audience. Yes, citing the massive lines to greet himself and the other Doctor Who stars at conventions across the globe. That's why I've always, that's why I've always talked about Doctor Who and Captain Jack and stuff. Some people think I'm a bit of a dick for doing it but i don't give a shit uh there's a market out there and sometimes i think it's being missed it's absolutely being missed it's being they listen the bbc wants to see fandom fandom reacts to things and fandom either likes stuff or they don't and they are very split on the new Doctor Who. I would say most of uh, Doctor Who fans, either uh, especially here in the States, I'll speak for here in the States, dipped out during the Capaldi era. 
Uh, a lot of kids did. So those new fans you got, you lost a bunch of them over the last few years over your very poor decisions. Uh, your decisions not looking at the actual data. Uh, it's like the BBC wants to produce a Doctor Who for the world that they see instead of the world for what it is. And the world for what it is wants to see John Berriman, David Tennant, Billy Piper come back. If you put David Tennant in it, it will bring in money, guaranteed. But they don't want it to happen. So they, you know what? He gets roadblocked by executive producers and people at the BBC who don't want this to happen because it would completely overshadow Jodie Whittaker's doctor. That's what's stopping it. You know, this happens a lot of time in corporate America with middle management keeping people down who are uh, better workers, more talented, and the middle management sees that. They will see that they get outshadowed, so or they will get outshine, outshone. So they, uh, so, you know, sometimes do shit behind this worker's back. Everybody's seen this. This happens all the time. It happens all the time in Hollywood. There's Hollywood's full of gatekeeping, and I'm sure the baby, the BBC is as well. And that's all that's keeping this from happening. So, uh, yeah, and you know, of course, there's a, anything produced by the BBC right now. I'm not too sure about anyway, but we'll see. It's not going to happen, but I would love it to happen. Uh, but if it happened in maybe 2010, it would be much better than happening in 2019. Maybe if we wait a couple more years before all this, so all this crap that's going on in entertainment settles. Uh, but unfortunately, everything that comes out right now is just woke to the nth degree. And it, this probably would be too. So I don't know. Maybe we should just enjoy what we have. I will get to uh, a little bit of the chat here. Uh, remember, there's a time limit on this one. And yeah, so this is essentially recording a video live because we do everything live here because it's called Nerdrotic Live. Cracklin, Nerdrotic, coming to you with another video today. And today, we're going to talk about Doctor Who. Uh, Gentleman Jack is now a lesbian. Well, you know, you never know. You never know. He's a doctor in some of the big finish stuff. And I don't want it to be a big finish adventure because uh, it looks like big, big finish is making a turn for the worse. Uh, uh, I don't know about, yeah, I don't, I, I Chris Saint uh, crowdfunding a, a government project. That's exactly what the problem would be. Um, it, it, it seems like the, the BBC crowd funds uh, <laughs> quite a bit uh, against a lot of people's will. Uh, I don't know exactly how it works, but yeah, they're crowdfunding already. <laughs> it's just, it's mandatory crowdfunding, which we don't like. We're talking about voluntary, you know, voluntary crowdfunding. Natalie Portman is Captain Jack. That's probably what, we'll, that's probably what they're waiting for. Hail from Santa Cruz. What's up? What's up? Chili Peen from Santa Cruz up here in NorCal. Uh, I call it NoCal because I'm from SoCal. I'm a SoCal. I've been up here for 18 years, but I was born and bred in Southern California. So I say dude a lot. I say dude a lot. Uh, thank you for the dollar 99 crackling. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. He's still doing uh, ticket. My blade says he's still doing torchwood audios. He is. And I've heard some of them. They're okay. I mean, they're, they're a little woke, but I like the older stuff. I really love the, the big finish. Older stuff is so good. Uh, I would love, yeah, they just, Mm. What's up, fat Gandalf? Uh, who else is okay with plastic rocks like the classic era? I am. I am okay with everything from the, I love paper mache and tin foil. Uh, that's, yeah, it would probably be, that's what I like. It would probably be Torchwoke. I mean, listen, but see, the thing is, Torchwood was in the beginning, diversity and inclusiveness done right. That was a way that was presented. It was just part of the show. People were flawed. There wasn't this, uh, oh God, the, the, the problem with writing right now is male writers writing women. They're afraid to write women with any complexity. So they're just all these uber power beings in charge. Uh, I was just noticing that in the boys. I'm about to review the boys. I've watched the boys and I liked it, but I did notice that Every person in charge was a woman <laughs> and they, and they gender swapped uh, some characters. So they would have a woman in charge. I thought that was uh, not interesting. It was, it was obvious and, and tired. Um, but uh, 
I like Capaldi's uh, bald companion. Had potential. He, I don't know. He was annoying. Uh, he was annoying. I, I, I found it all annoying. I haven't rewatched a single Capaldi episode. I think the only one I've rewatched a little bit of was uh, The Doctor Falls. Everyone I've seen, uh, I, I've rewatched um, uh, Murder on, uh, or Mummy on the Orient Express and Flatline. I think those are two great episodes, both by Jamie Matheson. Those are two like classic, good, solid Doctor Who episodes that I love. Those are the two best Capaldi episodes, in my opinion. And they felt like Doctor Who episodes. And that was, man, it was like an oasis in the desert. Uh, but let's be real. I mean, Doctor Who's been bad for a while. It's been bad for a while. And what's up, Ancient Mariner? How are you? Thank you, Mark Lazerth, Nihilus Shadow, Chris Persia, David Rayner, Fourth Drawer Down. What's in the Fourth Drawer Down? Fourth Drawer Down. Uh, Fat Gandalf, of course. Toots Baker. <laughs> Toots Baker. Honorably Tainted. I like that name a lot. Lucy Mao, uh, Frank Palmieri. Date, uh, I said David Rainer and take him on blade. Uh, and yeah, welcome everybody here. So Chris Chibnall will not let this happen. Uh, again, it will overshadow anything Jody Whitaker's doctor would do. It would be embarrassment. It would be embarrassing. So that's why John Berriman is getting the roadblocks and let's not lie about that. That is the only reason if, if you know, I think Torchwood is a tough sell, but you include David Tennant and Billy Piper. It, it ceases being a tough sell. That is an automatic with all the crap that they're bringing back. Now they're, they're doing a hitch. Oh my God. I want to do a video on this. They're doing a hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy television series run by one of the idiots from lost and, and a bunch of Americans on Hulu. It's sacrilege. So to my British brothers and sisters out there, I don't want anybody American ever involved in doctor who, Unless it's Peter Dinklage playing the doctor. That's the only uh, exception I'll make. And, and Hitchhiker. Hitchhiker is sacred and it is British. And I like it because it is British. I was raised on British comedy. Faulty Towers, Monty Python, Benny Hill. Uh, everything. Uh, the music. I was raised Doctor Who, of course, and I watched a ton. We have uh, we have our BBC is PBS, and uh, back in the old days, they used to just show a bunch of English programming in Sesame Street. So I watched it all the time, and that's what I grew up on. And and Americans can't write British humor at all. Uh, they shouldn't even try. Uh, there might be some very rare exceptions, but not not the guy from Lost who is behind the show Jack Ryan. I don't get a hitchhiker vibe from Jack Ryan. So I think this could be crowdfunded easily. Uh, they crowdfunded a, a quite a bit for the Veronica Mars movie. This is a film. So you again, you can get licensees, action figures, toys, play sets, Legos. There would be plenty. This would spawn a trilogy. And I think it would do pretty well in the theaters. Now it's not going to you know make a billion dollars. But if you keep the budget down, which you can do because, because it's Doctor Who, nobody expects, you know, space battles or I, I mean, nobody wants that. I don't want that in Doctor Who. It, it's Alex Kurtzman's currently destroying Star Trek that way. We don't need that in Doctor Who. You can make Doctor Who on a budget. As a matter of fact, I prefer it. Maybe even put a cap on it, like only give them so much money so they don't start going crazy and thinking they can, you know, just shoot everything in front of a green screen. You know, I want rock quarries. <laughs> you know, that's what I want. I want Cardiff. Shoot it in Cardiff and in rock quarries. That's it. I want it to all to take place in Cardiff or some planet that looks like a rock quarry. Uh, thank you, Stephen Yarnell, for the 99 cent donation. I greatly appreciate it. It keeps the light on. And, and two from Stephen Yarnell. Thank you very much. Oh. I still love Doctor Who. I still love Doctor Who. I just hate. Uh, I'm a fat Gandalf. I'm gonna make a trip to Cardiff. I'm gonna go there. I heard it's. Uh, people say it's not much, but there's a Cardiff in California, by the way, uh, right around the area I grew up. It's called Cardiff by the Sea. It's actually really beautiful. It's got a a, be a beach called George's. It's a famous surfing beach. Black Adder has been getting a new series for years. They keep trying, but nothing ever comes of it. Black Adder, freaking great. Uh, Hitchhiker movie was bad enough. It, David, it was awful. 
It was awful. Alan Rickman as as uh, Marvin was the only good thing in it. Uh, yeah, I did not like. Um, God, I'm Martin Freeman as Arthur. I thought he was terrible. I don't like Martin Freeman as the Hobbit. I don't like him as Arthur. Uh, he he comes off as this English everyman, but he's not. It's it comes off as fake. I don't know. I thought you know Colin Firth would have been a better Arthur, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. Uh, and Moz Def Moz Def as as uh, Ford Prefect was was awful. He mumbled through the whole damn movie. Tenet is the doctor. Well, you know, Baker is is Baker and Tenet are the doctors for me. Uh, the, I, I love, mo I mean, most of the doctors. I don't like Jody, but everybody else I, I you know, I like. I even, you know, kind of, listen, I love Trial of the Time Lord. I do. I think that that rocks. I love the whole Volleyard thing. It was great. It was great. I know some people don't like it, but uh, Colin Baker, I was very, very, very thankful that Jody came along. Uh, but no, I like I, I I see good in all the doctors except for Jody. Uh, it was rough for me because uh, I'm I appreciate the first Doctor Adventures much more now as an adult as I did when I saw him when you know about twenty years ago on VHS. But uh, Destiny Captain, I think Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy works best as an eighty series. It does. If they were smart, which they're not, they would make it an eighties show that it would take place in the 80s it, it is of the 80s it is of its time uh no cell phones or anything and we can't have that thank you for the dollar 99 super chat uh but okay sylvester mccoy i love sylvester mccoy i have um all my doctor who figure well they they fell down they fell down but you can see a do i've got them all over the place all right so we're going to end this one here folks sorry it's short but uh like i said this is a video i wanted to get some traction thank you for joining me for this live recording of a video, please remember to subscribe to Nerdrotic, my other channel. We just passed 110,000 subscribers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And there will be more Doctor Who videos on the way. Plus, I can announce that I am going to be teaming up with Bowls Trek for a regular Doctor Who live stream. So uh, I will announce that will be announced officially in the middle of August. But he and I have been chatting. I love Bowls Trek. Please subscribe to him. He's a great Doctor Who YouTuber. He's a little salty, but that's what I like. And there are there is the Inquisition. If you're watching this as a video today on time of recording, Sunday, 1253, uh, July 28th, uh, on my main channel with Overlord DVD, I will be uh, doing the Inquisition, and we will be talking about the Hitchhiker Show. So everybody, have a great day. And Mahler is live. Yeah, go check out EFAP if you're watching this live. Everybody have a great day. Please like, share, and subscribe. And yeah, get the conversation going. We would love a Torchwood slash Doctor Who movie starring David Tennant, John Berryman, and Billy Piper, and whew, Freema. We could bring back Freema, please. I like Freema. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, anybody, uh, uh, anybody from that era is fine with me, but get those three in. You will make money. But of course, it won't happen. But until Chris, maybe when Chris Chibnall leaves after next year, which I'm holding out hope for, maybe something will change. Until then, everybody have a great day. And not all who wander are lost.